Today in our 2013 Ford Explorer, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Takancha Prodigy P3 Trailer Brake Controller, part number 90195. We'll also be using Universal Installation Kit for Trailer Brake Controllers, part number ETBC7. This is what our brake controller looks like when it's installed. This is going to be a proportional brake controller. This is going to allow you to adjust your brakes on your trailer. This is going to be your gain. It goes up to 14, down to zero. This is going to allow you to set your braking power on your trailer to the exact amount of pressure that you want per the load that you're carrying. This is going to be your menu button. This is going to allow you to set your display, your brightness, contrast. This is your boost level. You have three levels. Then you have your override button. The override button is going to allow you to apply the brakes to your trailer only without applying the brakes to your vehicle. The proportional side of this brake controller, what that means is your brakes on your trailer are matching the brake pressure on your in your vehicle. When you apply the brakes in your vehicle, the brakes in your trailer are being applied and that pressure is being matched. Now what's good about this brake controller is inside the menu, you have the option to store several different trailers. If you have different size trailers, different weights, you have that option to set it. So you can just go back in, set it on whatever trailer you're pulling, and this is automatically adjusted to it. First thing we're gonna do to start our installation is you're gonna have your seven and four pole wiring. We're gonna take our bracket that comes with it and we're gonna mount it on to our seven pole first. I'm gonna put a screw in each corner. We're gonna start with one side and you're gonna have a nut a nut with a star washer. Put it on the back side. We'll do that with these two corners. Go ahead and take a flathead screwdriver and tighten them up. You want to make sure you don't tighten them too tight. You don't want to crack this plastic housing. We'll mount our seven pole on our bracket. Now this bracket doesn't come with your kit, but you can find one on our website, part number 18140. In our kit, you're gonna get some small screws, small washers. Because this is so close to the bumper, we're gonna take the screw and go up from the bottom. We'll put one screw in here. We can use a flathead or a Phillips screwdriver. Go ahead and tighten our screws up. Next, we're gonna take our duplex wire and you wanna split it right down the center. I'm going to strip my black wire. I'm going to add a heat shrink buck connector. These don't come in the kit, but you can find them on our website. Then I'm going to take this black wire and the buck connector that's on here, I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to strip this black wire. Then we're going to add the other end of the heat shrink buck connector onto our wire coming from our plug. The purpose of this is this is going to be outside of the vehicle and this is gonna help protect, protect this connection and keep it from corroding. And we'll just take a heat gun, shrink up our butt connector. So next we're gonna mount our ground wire, self-tapping screw that comes in your kit. You wanna make sure you mount it to metal surface, not to any plastic. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off our dust cap on our four pole. This four flat was already on the vehicle, so we have two options. You can take the four flat that was already on the vehicle, the four flat that's on the ETBC7, and you can connect them together, or you can cut both ends off and hardwire this together. First, what I wanna do is I wanna take some dielectric grease and put it inside on my connections. We'll plug them together. I'll take a zip tie Run it through around both of them. Cut off our excess. Next, what we want to do is we're going to take that buck connector on our blue wire. We're going to cut it off. And we're going to connect this one the same way we did our black wire, only this is going to go to our white wire in our duplex. Once you have your blue wire connected, we're not going to be using the purple wire. We're going to bunch all this together, put some wire loom on it. Once you've got all your wires cleaned up and attached your hitch back here, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run this to the front of the vehicle. And you can do it any way you want. You just wanna make sure you stay away from any heat sources or any moving parts. 
So from back here where I attach it to the back of the hitch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and over. We're gonna go over the hitch on the exhaust pipe right above here, back behind our panel. So I ran over top of my hitch to stay away from my exhaust. And you can see it right here, went through the hitch, found this existing piping, just kind of looped it around, went over the top here, came down zip tied here, ran it right underneath, a couple of zip ties along the way, back onto this existing piping. And you can see here, I just wrapped it around to the front. I ran a zip tie around the loom here. And you can see, I ran an airline tube down from my battery. So now our white wire is gonna to have to go to our brake controller, which is inside on, in the driver's compartment. Black wire is gonna be ran up top to the battery. So what we need to do is we need to split the duplex off. And you can see here, I tape my black power wire that's gonna be going up and connect to my battery. I've taped it to my airline tube. Now when I'm ready, I'll go up top, pull my airline tube, and it'll bring my black wire up to me. So now we'll pull our airline tube up with our black wire connected. Now to mount this, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna cut a little bit of piece of this rubber here so this is sit flat against there. Now we'll take out self typing screw and attach our circuit breaker. Once we have our circuit breaker mounted, then we'll take our black wire from underneath the vehicle and we're gonna cut it to size. And it's gonna be going on the auxiliary side, which is the silver side or silver post. And strip it. And we're gonna add a small ring terminal. Crimp it down. Place the nut. We just wanna snug that up. Once you have this connected, you need to make a jumper wire that's going to go from this copper colored terminal to the positive side of the battery. We're going to strip both ends of our black wire. We're going to add the large ring terminal on one side and the small ring terminal on the other. We'll take a 10 millimeter. We're going to take this nut off right here on top on our positive side of our battery. I'm gonna run my power wire and replace a nut. So now inside the driver's side, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up this kick panel. And if you have lights, you wanna make sure that you don't pull on it. You're gonna have a wire that runs there. All we need to do is just set this out of the way enough to get underneath the carpet. We're gonna have a plastic fastener right here. We're gonna just take a trim panel tool. We'll pull that out like that. Get this pad off, pull back our carpet. Well, we wanna to get to this grommet right here. So what I'm gonna do is I found a, if you push on it, this wire, this wire runs down and then drops down under the vehicle. So you take your finger and you push, right about here, it gets really soft. So that means I don't have this wire running all the way to the back. So I'm just gonna make a small slice in here. So I'm gonna take a piece of an airline tube, you use wire if you have some. I'm gonna try and push it through there. I'm gonna actually take this and push it into the airline tube. Now we'll just take a little bit of Loctite silicone. Just want to kind of cover this hole a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wire. I'm going to start folding my carpet back down. I'm going to make sure my wire is hanging out the top. Once you have that line ran, you can start putting your carpet and your panels back in place. So now if we come inside the vehicle, driver's side, underneath the dash, and our plug we're looking for is gonna be up underneath, right behind our hood release. In order to get that, we need to remove this panel. We're gonna have two screws here. We're gonna take a seven millimeter socket and pull those out.
pull that panel off first. So on this side, towards the door, there's a plastic ring on the top of this panel that's holding onto the screw or holding the panel onto the screw. You just want to reach up and pull down like that. On the uh, center part of the vehicle, this lip right here is going to be tucked up underneath the dash. Next, we need to locate the plug. Since we have a factory tow package, that's going to be the plug we're looking for. So now with our brake controller, to make it an easier installation, having the factory tow package, we're going to be using part number 3035. You see this blue wire that's running through here? The white wire that we just ran inside, we're going to have to connect it into that blue wire. This part is going to connect into our plug right underneath, right behind our release button for our, our hood. So what I'm going to do is I want to tie this in as close to this plug as possible, but not so close that it's hard to work with. So I'm going to pull back this tape and I'm going to do it right in this area. So now I'll just slide the sleeve off and I'm going to cut my wire right in here. I'll we'll cut our wire. We're going to splice both ends. And we're going to add a buck connector. Then we're going to take our white wire and we'll cut it and strip it. And we're going to tie it to the other end of our blue wire. Like this. Then we'll crimp our wires there. Take the other end of our blue wire, crimp it down, and then we'll heat shrink that to hold our wires together. Once we have that done, go ahead and plug the brown side into our wire under our dash. And we can take this, cut it across. Go ahead and put our bottom panel back in place. And what we want to do is we're going to go up over the top of the center section of the vehicle first. Kind of route this over like this. Next we can put our panel back in place. We're going to start the bottom ones. We'll get those in first. We'll set our top ones in place. And we'll start. We'll just push them back in place like that. So we need to find a good place to mount our brake controller. We don't want to go too low because then your shins hit it. If you go too high, their knees are going to hit it. I like to go in between top and bottom. So about right there. So I'm going to take one of my self-tapping screws and go about the center on the panel. And we'll take another one of our screws. We'll go into the side. And we'll have one more that's going to go on this side. It's easier to take this panel off. Put that in place. Then we can put our panel back in place. So now we'll plug our wire into the back of our brake controller. And you can see we have power. Now we can put our brake controller into our bracket. And then we'll just hide the rest of our wire here. Just kind of tuck it in back behind the dash. Once we're satisfied here, we get our wire tucked in where we need. Go ahead and reinstall our screws in, the, in our panel. Now with an alternate power source, we'll test out our lighting. Left blinker, right blinker, running lights, and brakes. This is going to show that we're getting power from our brake controller to activate our brakes on our trailer. And that'll do it for a look at and installation on the Concha Prodigy P3 trailer brake controller and ETBC7 on our 2013 Ford Explorer.